Hi guys, and welcome to this video. I'm Ellen, and I'm here to talk to you about some movies, more specifically the movies that I watched in July, because I watched enough movies to have a whole video just dedicated to the month of July. It's very exciting. I'm also incredibly nervous because for the past three days I have been having so many difficulties filming this video because of this camera. It just does not want to work on me, so I'm very nervous and let's hope we can get through an entire video <laughs> and talk about these movies. If not, I probably will cry. So I watched 10 movies, which I'm very happy about. Let's go into some stats about these movies. I've got them right here, ready to go. So I did watch a total of 10 movies and five of them were in the theater and five of them were digital. I'm so happy theaters are back. It's very exciting. Eight of the movies that I watched came out this year in 2021 and two of them did not. Okay, for the directors, uh, six of them were white and four of them were BIPOC and then seven of them were male and three of them were female. I watched one PG movie, uh, five PG-13 movies, three movies that were rated R and one that was rated TV-14. So then the shortest movie that I watched was 83 minutes and the longest that I watched was 138 minutes. So total I watched 1,151 minutes. So that averages to 37 minutes per day. I'm happy to have finally made it to the thousands. Genres is kind of shocking. I watched seven action movies. I've just been in a very action mood, I guess. I don't know. But then I have two adventure and then one comedy. And lastly, for the star ratings, I have one one star. I have one two star, five three stars, and three four stars, which comes out as an average of three stars. So like I did with my um, book wrap up as well as my previous movie wrap up, I'm going to talk about the movies in order of least liked to most liked. So I'm going to start with my one star rated movie and that is The Green Knight. I have a very unpopular opinion because every review that I saw of this movie was like five stars. 4.5 stars and I'm over here just like I hated this movie. <laughs> so The Green Knight, I've decided that to describe movies because I suck at it, I'm just going to read their descriptions online. I'm not good at talking, you know me. Okay, so The Green Knight is an epic fantasy adventure based on the timeless Arthurian legend the Green Knight tells the story of Sir Gawain, King Arthur's reckless and headstrong nephew, who embarks on a daring quest to confront the... A word I don't know, but the Green Knight, uh, a gigantic emerald-skinned stranger and tester of men. I... yeah, no, I really didn't like this. I saw this in the theater as well, and there was a guy sitting like three seats away from me, and he fell asleep about an hour into it and just started snoring, like, very loudly. And usually I'd be very annoyed by that, but I wasn't this time because all I could think of was just same, dude. Same. I was so bored and so confused. I did not understand half of what was going on in this movie. And I also didn't understand why a lot of things were happening. Like I would see something happening and I'm just like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't get what world we're in. I don't understand what movie I'm watching. I just didn't get a lot of what was happening. I also didn't really connect with a lot of the characters. I didn't like a lot of the characters. The only character I liked was the fox. And then the fox started talking and I lost interest in the fox. I think my least favorite part about this movie though was the music. It was so annoying. It, it sounded like nails on a chalkboard to me. And I feel like that was the point and there was like a reason for that and like I get that but at the same time I cannot listen to that. It it makes me cringe and it makes me want to stop watching what I'm watching. I did not like the filmmaking of this movie. To me these types of shots like they're pretty but they do nothing for me. There was one shot I remember it went like upside down and it did like a whole circle and I'm like what was the point of that? There were also a lot of shots that just like lasted very long 
and were just like very artsy and it was just too artsy for me. The shots that last that long, I'm just like, okay, 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 when are we moving on? There was one shot too where it did like, again, a 360 and like it went around, it showed him like lying on the ground and then it came back and it showed him lying on the ground as a skeleton and then it went back around the other way and then came back and he was good again. And I was just like, what was the point of that shot? I will say the acting was good, but it was not good enough to save the movie for me. So it's a one star. Now we're on to the two star and the two star movie is Space Jam, A New Legacy. This is the second Space Jam movie. I watched the first Space Jam years ago. I vaguely remember it. <laughs> I think I only ever watched it like one or two times. This is kind of the same deal in the sense that a basketball star uh, is playing basketball with the Looney Tunes. Let me read the actual synopsis. <laughs> okay, so when LeBron, because we get LeBron James in this one, when LeBron and his young son Dom are trapped in a digital space by a rogue AI, LeBron must get them home safe by leading Bugs, Lola Bunny, and the whole gang of notoriously undisciplined Looney Tunes to victory over the AI's digitized champions on the court. It's Tunes versus Goons in the highest stakes challenge of his life. Sure. <laughs> this was okay. Like, I can definitely see kids having fun with this. And I think some adults will have fun with this and like won't mind it, but it does have its issues. If we're going to compare this to the original, this was definitely not as fun as the first movie. I also just want to say, I, I remember the soundtrack to the first Space Jam being really great. I mean, I will just never forget like that opening with Space Jam. I just remember the music being really awesome for Space Jam and I don't remember the music for this one. I did kind of like the father-son aspect to the story. It wasn't just like, oh, we got to save the Looney Tunes. It was also like a father and son kind of story. And I think that's what's at the forefront too, is the father-son story. But I will say the father-son story is very predictable and it kind of made the Looney Tunes like side characters and like a side B story when the whole point of going to see the movie is for the Looney Tunes. So I, I didn't quite get that. Also, there was a lot of uh, Warner Brothers plugging all of their stuff that they produce and film. It was just like a bit too much. LeBron's acting, I didn't think was as bad as I was gonna, I was expect. I was expecting it to like not be good at all, but it actually wasn't too bad. And then I also really liked Don Cheadle as the AI, our villain. I thought he did a great job, but I do think overall the movie was just too over the top, which is why it's a two star. <laughs> to the three stars and there are a lot of three stars <laughs> so we're starting with Gunpowder Milkshake. This was a movie on Netflix that I was kind of excited for. I mainly just really like Karen Gillan so I wanted to see her in an, something else other than the Jumanji movies which are like my favorites. I love those Jumanji movies so much. Anyway, so in her turbulent life as a professional assassin, Scarlett was cruelly forced to abandon her daughter Sam and go on the run. Years later, despite the estrangement, Sam has also grown up into a cold-blooded hit woman. After a high-stake mission spins out of control, putting an innocent eight-year-old in the middle of the gang war she has unleashed, Sam has no choice but to go rogue. This ultimately leads her back to her mother and her former hit women sidekicks who all join forces in an avenging war against those who took everything from them. Okay, I thought it was really great cinematography. I loved the use of color and all like the neon. It looked really cool. There was um, a lot of shots. I, I, I didn't know how to explain this, but like these shots just kind of bugged me. And I think there it like happened three times in the movie where, sorry, I'm looking at my notes, <laughs> where there's people like there's like someone in the foreground and then there's people in the background and you are focused on both but the rest around them is like blurry. I didn't like those shots. They felt very out of place and weird. 
<laughs> but other than that, I thought the cinematography was great, and I thought the film, like, the actual, like, shots themselves were good. Oh, there were also too many shots of just, like, standing and staring and talking before a fight happens. And it's just like, okay, are we gonna get to the fight or are we gonna have another minute of them just staring at each other? Oh, the fight choreography though was really cool. I enjoyed all of the fighting. Maybe that's why I was really into action movies because I was just really in the mood for fights. My biggest issue I think I had with this movie was just like, where and when are we? I didn't quite get that. I get like it was done for aesthetics, but at the same time, I have no idea like where and when we are. Like it looked like a 50s apocalypse mob Gotham City kind of place. <laughs> but then also people were using flip phones. Where and when are we? Also the dialogue was a little weird at times. So the writing was just kind of meh. Oh, I also didn't understand the eight-year-old girl. Like I get at the beginning why she was there, but then I didn't understand why she was there throughout the entire movie because they're not after the little girl. At some point, they're like done going after the little girl. So I don't know why she had to keep the little girl around. Oh, really great production design and I loved the library and like it was just a library of weapons but like they were hidden inside of books so it also looked like a real library it just looked so dang cool and the fight scenes like the very well maybe not the very last fight scene but the fight scene within the library was definitely my favorite part of the whole movie I did think there were too many slow-mo shots and I do think the ending was just too easy that is it for Gunpowder Milkshake. It was fine. My next three star movie is Snake Eyes. Um, so I know th I know this is a G.I. Joe movie, um, or like a G.I. Joe origin movie, which I didn't realize going into the movie. <laughs> uh, but the tagline is every warrior has a beginning, hence why it's a G.I. Joe origin. So after saving the life of their heir apparent, tenacious loner Snake Eyes is welcomed into an ancient Japanese clan called... I'm not even going to attempt to say that word because I feel like I'm not going to say it correctly. Um, where he is taught the ways of the ninja warrior. But when secrets from his past are revealed, Snake Eyes' honor and allegiance will be tested, even if that means losing the trust of those closest to him. I mainly saw this because of Henry Golding. <laughs> I love Henry Golding so much and I do think he's a great actor and he does a good job in this movie. I just don't think everyone's acting is very good. I also don't think the the, the script really helped them <laughs> with their acting because uh, some of the dialogue and some of the writing was just a little rough. I also thought uh, some of the camera work was a little too shaky. Um, the sound effects, like the sound editing, was too over the top because usually I don't really pay attention to it but it was just like so prevalent that I couldn't help but pay attention to it and that's when it's been overdone it's you need to scale it back scale back the sound editing it's too much there were also just too many cliches also there were so many moments where like the guy I don't want to like ruin anything but like there were so many moments where like it would have been over like that, but they just like kept dragging it on. And like, I get it, it's a movie, you don't want it to be over within like five seconds and you don't want certain things to happen to certain characters. But like, if the villain is doing this to the side characters, he could easily do it to the main characters as well. Like, why are we not, why would he not do that? I did really enjoy the fight choreography. Again, fight choreography, I'm going to talk about it because I really enjoy watching fighting. Um, and I, I do think this did a good job with fight choreography. I just think the camera work could have been better to show it. But overall, it was an okay movie. And I'll still watch the sequel if they have a sequel because I kind of liked 
like uh, like where the story's kind of going, especially with like the one character. Like I think it's a bit dramatic and a bit over the top, but like I can see I saw like how this character got to this point. So I like the character development within this movie as well. Anyway, it's a three star. My next three star is Escape Room 2 Tournament of Champions. I'm so upset that this is a three star. I really, really loved the the first movie. I remember when I first saw it, I was just kind of like, yeah, it's fine. I like it. It's it's enjoyable. But I have watched it so many times since then that I'm at this point like, you know what? It's a favorite movie. Oh, the tagline is winning is just the beginning. I actually kind of like that. Um, six people unwittingly find themselves locked in another series of escape rooms, slowly uncovering what they have in common to survive as they discover all the games that they've played before. So I really like liked the first one. The second one, I, I was, they made it sound like they were upping the ante. Everything was going to be like more. And in a sense, it kind of was, but to an unrealistic point. Especially with the first room, it was just like, I'm sorry. I don't think any of them would have made it out of that room alive with how it was. And they were just like solving things a little too quickly to the point where it seemed unbelievable. I also just really, like the dialogue too was kind of like hit or miss with this movie. I still really like our main two characters from the first movie and they're in this one. The new characters I didn't really get attached to as much. I feel like because with the first movie, we really got to learn about all the characters. With this one, we didn't really learn much about these new characters. I liked learning about what their escape rooms were like, but like, that was pretty much all we got. We didn't really get much about their life, kind of like we did with all of the characters from the first movie and all of the trauma that they've went through. We didn't get that. I don't know, I just felt like they're, they were trying to do too much and yet they couldn't, so they just focused on something and then it just became too much. I, I don't know. The ending. I'm not gonna spoil it because it is a really big like twist, but I didn't like it. And I don't know why I didn't like it. It was just like as soon as that twist happened, as soon as it happened, it, it took me out of the movie. I did enjoy the escape rooms though. Like I, thought they were clever, I just think that they were solved too quickly. I'll still, if they do the third, if they do a third movie, because with the way this ended, I'm sorry, there has to be a third movie. I will definitely still watch the third movie because I enjoyed the second one. It just felt like too much. My next three star is Black Widow. I don't normally watch Marvel movies. I, I've noticed that I tend to like women superhero movies more than any other superhero movies. I'm not really a superhero movie kind of gal, which is shocking because I do like action and adventure movies, even though most of them are in the three star category. <laughs> I need to rethink my life. I think a lot of it I didn't quite get what was going on because I, again, I don't watch Marvel movies, so I don't know anything really about the Avengers or her past or whatever. And so I think a lot of things just kind of went over my head or they were like talking about something and I was like, oh, um, okay, sure. I didn't realize that was a thing. Is that, a th is that what's going on? <laughs> I was like, just so confused. So oh, she's done running from her past. That's the uh, tagline. But Natasha Romanoff, also known as Black Widow, confronts the darker parts of her ledger when a dangerous conspiracy with ties to her past arises. Persuaded by a force that will stop at nothing to bring her down, Natasha must deal with her history as a spy and the broken relationships left in her wake long before she became an Avenger. I, I found this storyline to just be like a mediocre storyline. I didn't find myself really invested in what was happening and I didn't find myself invested in the villain. Like I just felt like it was a mediocre villain. However, I very much enjoyed the characters. Um, mainly our four, our four main characters that we're following. I really enjoyed their characters and watching the actors portray them on screen. My favorite is definitely Florence Pugh. I'm sorry, but Florence Pugh stole this movie. And at this point, I am just a fangirl of Florence Pugh. She is just, I, she's on the screen and I can't take my eyes off her in any movie, anything I've seen her in, like, 
cannot take my eyes off her. I also thought David Harbour kind of stole the show as well. They were just fantastic. And I, I, yeah. But this is a three star movie, it was okay. I just really liked a few little moments here and there and I really enjoyed the actors. Moving on to our last three star movie. <laughs> it's Shadow in the Cloud. So this is like a war movie that has a little bit, I want to say, of like a little bit of a fantastical element to it. So it's, it was interesting having a war movie mixed with like, what is, a goblin? I don't know what that creature was, but it was like a goblin? Not a goblin. I don't know. It was some sort of creature. So Shadow in the Cloud, like I said, it's a war movie. Ooh, every mission has its demons. So a World War II pilot traveling with top secret documents on a B-17 flying fortress encounters an evil presence on board the flight. It's a goblin. Is I don't know what it is. This was definitely my favorite of the three stars. I enjoyed a lot about the movie, but I do just want to mention that I didn't really understand what, we're just going to call it a goblin, but I don't understand what the goblin was doing. Like it was never explained why the goblin is doing what it's doing. I'm not going to say what it's doing because that would be a spoiler. What is it, like the first hour of the movie? You're just in one place, but you're just on her the whole time, and it's just in the one place, and it's just a continuous moment. And that kind of bugged me, because that was just like very slow. But then once the twist came, I was, you know what, I'm here for it. And then we got out of that one location and we started going throughout the rest of the plane. Since this is taking place in World War II, our pilot is the lady. The lady is the pilot, and there's a lot of sexist remarks made that I just really didn't like. They made me very uncomfortable, and I just hated how they, like, didn't take her seriously. And it also just felt like too much. Like, it's fine, like, I get it, like, that happened, like, people will still make those sexist remarks, but there was just too much of it, and so especially like there was a lot of it in the beginning and so it just felt a little too uncomfortable. This had like so many different genres. It was sci-fi, it was fantasy, it was war, it was horror, it was romance, it was action. Like I kind of didn't mind that because I love having a lot of different elements in movies to keep things interesting and I think that definitely did this. But I just really wished again the film make the filming had been a little bit different in the beginning. Like, I wish we weren't just on her. Which, by the way, I thought Chloe Grace Moretz, who did play our lead, did a fantastic job. It's very ridiculous, but I am here for it. So I I enjoyed it. I also just loved, like, the theme of this movie. It's just, like, women are better than men. Suck it. <laughs> that was kind of the theme of the movie, and I loved it. Now we're on to our four star movies and there are three four star movies and these are the last three movies that I will be talking about. The first of the four stars is a movie called The Bros. This is a Korean comedy drama. It also had a little bit of fantasy to it. Uh, but you know, so this is a Korean movie so it isn't Korean. I watched this a movie night with my roommate. She was really in the mood for a Korean movie because she watches a lot of Korean dramas. And so I was like, okay, let's watch a Korean, but I was more in the mood for a comedy. So we, sh we found this movie, it was a comedy, but then it also kind of turned into a drama a little bit. Two brothers who never needed each other are now destined to be together. Uh, reunited in their hometown for their father's funeral, two self-interested brothers meet a peculiar woman who shares a huge secret about their family. Yeah, I, I did enjoy this movie. I know, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the average rating on this site and it says 2.8. <laughs> I gave it four stars. I had fun. There is definitely one scene that I have in mind that just like, I laughed hysterically and so did my roommate. And we watched that scene like three times just because it was so funny. I also really enjoyed the acting and I had a very fun time watching it. The only issue I had with it were there were plot holes um, and there were times that I was confused. And I'm not sure if it's because of the writing or if it's because of the English translation. And I, I, I think it's because of the English translation. I don't think certain things were translated well 
because again there were a lot of plot holes and just a thing couple of things that just didn't quite make sense but overall it was very funny and I had a blast watching it. My next four star movie is a movie that really surprised me and that is The Tomorrow War. I I remember like wanting to watch it when it first came out and then I was just like nah I'll push it off maybe I won't even watch it and then by the end of the month I was like you know what let's just watch it let's see what it's like and I loved it oh my god I loved it. The fight for tomorrow begins today. I love I'm loving these taglines. Anyway, so an ordinary family man named Dan Forrester is recruited by time travelers from 30 years in the future to fight a deadly war against aliens. Yeah, I think this is definitely like my most surprising movie so far this year because I really thought this was just going to be an okay movie, but I really liked it. I, I really did. I enjoyed all of the family relationships, like the family daughter relationship, the fuck, sorry, the family daughter, the father daughter relationship. I loved that storyline. I loved uh, the father son relationship storyline and just like all of the family dynamics with each other. I really enjoyed that and I thought those were written pretty well. I really liked that I was able to understand because usually with time travel movies and time travel books I have a very hard time like following and a hard time understanding but I was able to understand this one and be able to like follow everything that's happening. There are some unrealistic moments and it also is very science heavy so a lot of the science stuff I still didn't quite understand but like it, it it was fine. My favorite scene and the most realistic moment of the whole movie is my favorite character Charlie as he's like shooting the gun at an alien for literally like a minute straight all he says over and over again is shit 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 and I'm like yep that's exactly what I would do if I was shooting a gun at an alien that was chasing me for a minute straight. I would just constantly shout shit over and over and over again. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I enjoyed this one a lot. And now for my favorite movie of the month and the highest four star of the month is another surprise because I didn't think I would like it this much, but it is Jungle Cruise. I was highly anticipating this movie because I did think I would like it. I didn't think I would love it. <laughs> It's not a five star because I did have a few issues with it, but like very small, tiny issues. But I love this movie and I kind of just want to go and watch it again. <gasps> the Adventure of a Lifetime. Eh, that one's not as good. So Dr. Lily Houghton, I think that's how it was pronounced, um, enlists the aid of wisecracking skipper Frank Wolf to take her down the Amazon in his dilapidated boat. Together they search for an ancient tree that holds the power to heal. A discovery that will change the future of medicine. So this is a very fun movie and I love how they're like a wisecracking skipper Frank Wolf. Oh my god he made so many dad jokes and it made my dad joke loving heart so happy. I was actually like laughing out loud and cracking up in the theater. It was very fun, very funny. I enjoyed the plot, I enjoyed the whole like journey. It was a bit too long, they definitely could have condensed some things or just like taken some things out. But overall, really enjoyed this movie and I highly recommend watching it. I had so much fun. So that is it for the movies, but now I'm going to talk about, I'm, you know, I'm going to briefly mention some theater that I watched in the month of July because I actually watched a lot of theater, <laughs> but they're all rewatches. So I'm not going to go too in depth with them, but I did rewatch, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven musicals and they're all star kid musicals because I love star kid I'm gonna keep saying it I love their musicals the musicals that I rewatched this month were twisted the guy who didn't like musicals black friday um a very potter musical a very potter sequel a very potter senior year and then I also rewatched uh the trail of oregon so I basically just like rewatched a lot of my favorite star kid musicals and I recommend all of them. Mainly Twisted and The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals. Those are my favorites. And now we're going to talk about some TV for just a little bit. The first TV show I'm going to talk about is Love Victor Season 2. Oh my god. My love for this show can't be matched. It just can't. It does a lot of things really well. 
The writing is fantastic. The like whole storyline and the way that they handle such tough topics is done so well. And then the acting is also brilliant. I, I cried so many times watching this. I mean, the whole Felix storyline made me cry. And I'm still kind of like unsure about how I feel about the ending. They need to have a season three. They need a season three. They can't leave me with that cliffhanger. Just like they did with season one, they left with a huge cliffhanger. And thankfully they started off the season two right where that cliffhanger left off. Like this show just feels so realistic in the sense that like the conversations actually feel like conversations people would have and the topics they discuss are like actual like topics being discussed in the world and it's just like it's so good but then it also is just such a feel-good show like yes it breaks your heart I also really like that Andrew's a good guy now we, we can like Andrew now <laughs> I also really like the introduction of the new character Lily I think her name was. I felt Mia was just a bit of a bummer this whole season. Like, I get it. I get it. Like, there's a reason she is a bummer, and like, I get it. But I just feel like they could have at least done something happy with her. They kind of did, but then it just like backfired. <laughs> and I just, I want her to be happy. And I love all the little cameos from actors within the movie Love, Simon. I love that they make little cameos in Love, Victor. Anyway, this is a fantastic show. This is like one of those shows that I recommend to everyone. And it's just upsetting me that like so many people in my life do not watch this show. And it's just, it's one of the greatest TV shows ever, ever. I'm gonna go out there and say that. <laughs> the next one I wanna talk about, I'm really sad. Uh, Buzzfeed Unsolved True Crime Season 8, uh, the last season did not know this. They mentioned it, I think, in their first episode that this is going to be the last season, and I'm upset. I absolutely love this show so much, and I'm upset to see it go, and I know they're doing um, BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural, and that's also going to be the last season of that. I hope that, like, these guys will continue to do stuff like this, though, because it's really interesting, and I love the way that they do it as well, but this is a true crime show. They just talk about, um, true crimes that are unsolved and go into all the theories about what might have happened, what could have happened. I love Shane and Ryan. I love their banter. I mean, I also watch their post-mortem show where they answer questions from the episodes. I highly recommend watching it. It's all on YouTube for free. Go and watch it. Ooh, okay, so the next TV show I'm going to talk about is Secrets of Sulphur Springs season one. This is a children's TV show on Disney+. Plus. We have the town of Sulphur Springs, okay? We have, I don't remember characters' names, but we have our main guy, our boy, our little boy. Him and his family have just moved to Sulphur Springs and they have moved into uh, a rundown hotel. And it's known in the town that like this hotel is haunted. No one ever goes to it. They avoid it. And so now that someone's moved in and is like renovating it, they're like, are you sure? Cause like, are you sure you're okay? Cause it's a haunted, it's a haunted hotel. And then we also have the girl who's lived there her whole life and her and the boy become friends and she goes and visits him at the hotel and then they find a secret bunker in the basement that then leads them to travel back in time. I think it was to the eighties. Yeah, sometime, oh yeah, I think it was like 1981. No. Yeah? No. 1991? Hold on a sec. Oh, it was 1991. Because they went 30 years into the past. Well, I feel old. While they're in the past, they're solving a mystery because this one girl went missing um, in 1991 and no one's ever been able to solve it. And there was like a camp that happened near this hotel and that's where she went missing was at this camp and so they're there trying to like help solve whatever happened to her and make sure she doesn't go missing because they find out also their parents went to this camp and they start like hanging out with their like 
their parents when their parents were teenagers and children. It's very fun. I feel like I took a very long time to explain that this show, but it's a fun show. And with the way it ended, I will say it kind of got a little bit too much by the ending, but the ending, I, I want a second season. I would like to continue finding out about what is going on. The next TV show I'm going to talk about is not quite a TV show, but like, it kind of is, but it's How To Olympics. It had episodes, so I'm counting it as a TV show, but this is the Try Guys. I love the Try Guys. In each episode, they are learning about a specific event at the Olympics, and they're being taught how to do that event by someone who is a professional in that event. It was fun. I, I mean, I love the Try Guys, so they always make me laugh, and it was actually quite um, educational, learning about the different events at the Olympics and the history behind them and all like the rules and regulations that go along with the events. Um, and then of course the entertainment of them trying to attempt to do it. And then the last TV show I'm going to talk about is Schmigadoon, which by the way, I need to call my mom and see and just like talk about the latest episode. So I'm loving this show. It's on Apple TV. It's kind of like a homage to old musicals, like musicals from the 50s, there are lots of musical references to, in this show. I mean, A, Schmigadoon, Brigadoon, but then there's a lot of Music Man references, a lot of Carousel, and it's also very funny. I like that we have like two modern day women, modern day women, we have two modern day people, they're a couple, they're having some like relationship problems and they find themselves stuck and trapped in Schmigadoon, which is a town that looks like you just stepped right into a 50s movie musical. And I love that we have like all these Broadway people uh, in the show as well. You've got Kristen Chenoweth. Oh, you've also got Dove Cameron, Aaron Tveit. Oh my god, I fall in love with Aaron Tveit. Uh, Ariana Du Bois. Fantastic show. I highly recommend watching it if you have the means and the chance to do so. Um, but that is, I think, it for this video. Yeah, I've talked about the movies, I've talked about the TV shows, I've talked about the theater. I do also have my book wrap-up for the month of July. You can go check that out. I put a link to it down below. Um, and I will see you guys later with more videos. Bye!